you don't have to necessarily pay a whole bunch of people to make a game. You can gain friends, gain a network, and you can make a game for completely free. It might be harder, you're gonna have to interact with people, but very worth it. Completely agree that you should find a way, save up some Robux, and then you can start to fund things. It's also key to gain knowledge along the way because you could do that, but if you aren't looking at those commissions that you take as, you know what, I wanna learn as much as possible here. I want to gain as much as I can, not just the Robux. If you aren't looking at it that way, you're not gonna be ready to make that full game later. So what I did when I worked on, for example, the Ryan's World Roblox game, I was building on that. I was actually very focused on how did a studio work? How did they manage their teams? How did they do these things? How did they manage updates? And I focused on these details and I was very tuned in. How, how are they communicating well as a team? And I think that that's something very key that people don't realize about commissions, especially if you're getting into, you know, getting into those more professional teams. If you're getting hired by them, which you absolutely can as a newer developer, that was 2020 or 2021 for me. And I had been developing for a few years. I was able to get that, you know, back then. So new developers, especially focus on those things that those teams are doing and that the commissioners doing, how are they commission? How are they coming to you with their commission? How are they uh, reaching out to you? How are they finding you? Because now if you also have that information and wisdom from doing your commissions, and analyzing how exactly are these people coming to me and giving me commissions? How exactly are they running their teams? How exactly are they finishing these projects? How, what exactly differentiates, what are the differences between a project that I work on with uh, for a commission for somebody else that actually releases and does well, or actually releases at all, compared to the ones that never release or the team falls apart or the game doesn't do well? compare what was the difference was there a leadership style was the person who was commissioning me more positive and more uh, more effective at being a leader or was it something else was it the way that they managed the game was it the developers they were choosing did they did that were they nice to the people they were working with what was there that made their game successful and you're going to find that when you do this you're going to gain so many more insights and so much more value from what you're learning from these commissions and from working with these other developers, and especially if you're in those professional environments or more skilled, long, long time developers, you're gonna learn so much from them doing that compared to any amount of Robux or any amount of money you're gonna gain from it. The insights that you gain from taking action and actually working for these people are infinitely more valuable than any kind of Robux or money you're gonna gain from working on a commission. Wow, that was good. That's why you're the king of Roblox development YouTube.